I feel very fortunate to have been able to have such a good cheap dog as Peg. But now I've got her understudy, her replacement, which is Gwen, who's got to fill those big footsteps as my working dog. And you may remember I introduced her to you when she first joined the farm, when we were getting to know each other and I was sort of learning her commands. Well, now she's come on quite well and uh, I can give you a little demonstration. It's generally considered that the best herding dog in the world is the Border Collie, and that's what Gwen is. And it's been bred into them, that herding instinct, and they want to get around the flock or herd. They want to be the other side of the handler, so to 12 o'clock from where I am. And they'll round up anything. If anybody's got a Border Collie as a pet, you'll know that they'll want to chase a child's bicycle run after a car wheel that's going round, maybe even water coming out of a hose pipe. They just want to round things up that are moving. It's instinctively within them, or most of them anyway, not all, but pretty much uh, a border collie that's bred for working will work. Now, the commands are to the right, to the left, stop and walk on. Those are the basics, and then it gets a little bit more complicated that, than that as a dog becomes more advanced. And when a sheepdog is far away, what you don't want to be doing is bellowing, shouting to it all the time. So then you convert those commands to a whistle. Some people will stick their fingers in their mouth to whistle or just whistle through their teeth, but I use this, which is a Logan whistle. Mr. Logan was well known for being a fantastic sheepdog trialing man and invented the Logan whistle that lots of people use now all over the world. Still no sign of the dog. That's a walk-on whistle. And here he comes now, way over to the left. He's gone right round the back of the trees. And now he's coming on to the sheep. Now, what you do is put the right whistle to the right command. So my away is a specific whistle, my left, my stop, and my walk-on. So what I'll do is I'll send Gwen off and uh, give you a little bit of a demonstration. So stand is her stop command, stand, stand. And then her left hand command is come by. And what she'll do is she'll run off to the left hand side of those sheep, taking a nice wide berth all the way around them so that she gets right up around the back of them and then instinctively wants to bring them towards me. So she's done that, she's run right round, and I'll stop her. And she's just led down really nicely. Total control, that's absolutely brilliant. And then bringing the sheep towards me nice and slowly. Her walk on command is steady or They've got fantastic hearing, so you don't have to blast a whistle out. Just want to move around to the left. That's her left hand command that she took really nicely. Sheep aren't in a hurry, they're not belting up the field towards me. Nice steady walk, not stressing them too much or tiring them out. And she's got what's called natural balance. She just keeps the right distance away from them to move them steady and using her own intelligence. So if they move left or right, she'll move without a command to bring them towards me. They're nearly here, just walking on nicely. If I walk back a bit, they'll come past you. On, steady, steady. Away. Steady, good girl, good girl. Steady, good girl. Away, away. Stand, come by. Stand. Just using those commands with quite a gentle voice because she's doing it well. So to the right, away, away. Good girl, away. And she should go all the way round until I tell her to stop. Away. Good girl. Away. Away. Stand. Stand is her stop command. And then the other way to the left. Come by. Come by. Good girl. Come by. Stand. And she stops. I walk on. Good girl. Come by. Stand. Good girl. Stand. And then what you should be able to do is move those sheep in any direction by using the command. Stand. So to the left, come by. Come by. Stand. So I should be able to drive those sheep away from me now by just getting it to walk behind them. So that's a steady command. Steady. A bit too fast. Stand. They're moving. Stand. Stand. 
So that's her gone a little bit out of control. So what I'm going to do is bring her back now. So her come back command is that'll do, or the whistle. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Good girl. Gwen. And the reward is a good girl. Good girl. So that she knows I'm happy and I'm pleased and she's done a good job. What a good dog, Gwen. What a good dog. But keen as anything, is really happy to go again. So Gwen is just over two now. She's really mastered all the basic commands. And now to develop that, if you're a very good sheepdog handler, which I'm not, you can put all sorts of extra things into the command. So on a right hand whistle, you can speed it up or slow it down. She'll start to do that now, actually. So you put more strength into the whistle or the voice command and the dog will go faster or slower depending on the tone and the strength of the voice or the whistle. So the softer is slower, the harder is faster, and you can put them through the gears like the gears of a car to speed up or slow down. With the stop command, they can go from a full gallop to a canter, to a trot, to a walk, to a standing, to a lying down. So you can use all these different strengths of whistle depending on how much pressure you want to put on the sheep. And with the right or left hand commands, what you can do with the whistle, if you send them out to the right or left, you can send them, give them that whistle command and then put a tweak into the tone of the whistle that just sends the dog out a little bit wider if the sheep are further out. And that is a great skill that I haven't mastered. But there's the, also the look back command. So if you have a big field, the dog rounds up the flock and then some come out from under a bush or from under a hedge that she hasn't seen and she leaves them behind, you can stop her and then send her back, which is the look back command. And so if I just show you that now, although she knows that they're over there, so I'll say look back. And so she's learnt that and reacts very well. And then what I need to do now is come up with a whistle to put to the look back command. So my stop is, my right is stop, my left stop, my walk on, and my come here. But what I haven't got yet is a look back whistle. So I probably need to, need to phone up Mr. Logan and ask him how to do it. But it could be, or, or whatever you want. But I just has to be really, really consistent. If you get the whistles wrong, it's like speaking a foreign language to your dog. They just don't understand it. And it's highly advisable not to have a bag of crisps or a chocolate bar before you start whistling, for obvious reasons. Away, stand. These boys are strong. They're facing her now. Gwen, here, here. Good girl, stand. Good girl, good girl. Go on, boys. Gwen, Gwen, that'll do, that'll do, Gwen. Gwen, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Steady, steady, steady. Good girl. Steady, stand, come by. These are powerful rams that are quite belligerent and strong and you know, strong in the head because they think that they're the boss and they're facing Gwen. And Gwen, as a sheepdog, lacks a little bit of power. She'll use the eye to try and mesmerize the sheep to shift them, moving her body left, to, left and right, trying to sort of frighten them to move them away. But they'll turn and face her and try and batter and she'll back off. And as soon as she backs off, they know that they've won and they then won't move. So sometimes I have to walk in to give her a hand. Whereas a more powerful dog would stand its ground and the sheep would know not to go anywhere near it because they'd be frightened about getting bitten. In sheepdog trialing and of course on the farm, if a dog bites the sheep or grips them it's called, that's frowned upon because the last thing you want is a, one of your sheep with teeth marks in it because it hurts it and damages it and isn't very good for animal welfare. So trying to get a powerful dog without a bite is quite a difficult balance to find. So I'm encouraging Gwen and going, get in, get in, push them, push them, trying to get her to really work in hard on them to try and shift those rams along. But it's difficult. With younger sheep or with ewes, they'll move freely. But with rams, well, they're a different kettle of fish. Well, that's a little update on sheepdogs and how Gwen is getting on. 
Now I've got to get the rams into the pens because I'm preparing them for tupping time, which is when the boys go out with the girls. And that's what we'll be talking about in the next episode. That'll do, that'll do, Gwen, that'll do.